Hey, what's good fam? Much love to everyone who checked out my 4 or 4 day finger drum beat set that I dropped last week. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up the SP404 Mark II for that session. Especially stuff like my layout, effects settings, and how I used pad link and mute groups to make life easier. So the challenge was to take some beats of mine and see if I could reduce them to just 16 pads, aiming for one bank per beat. For example, on bank A is one of the beats called Acetate, where the top eight pads are the melodic stuff, and then down here are the drums. And then on pad 11 here, is the intro to the next beat on the set list. I trigger it here, which then gives me a lot of time to switch over to bank C and start the next beat. The only beat that required two banks to perform was off cut three, which filled up both banks D and I. The bottom row of pads are again my drums, and I copied them exactly the same in both banks, so that I can switch between the two without the drums changing even though everything else on pads 1 through 12 are completely different. Now effects. The first thing I should mention is that over in effects settings, I've swapped out filter drive with super filter, resonator with stopper, and the delay with tape echo. For the MFX button, I keep it on scatter, set to type 10, depth 100, scatter on, and speed to single. DJ FX looper, I set the length to 0 0.066, speed to 100, Isolator is just mids set to 2.3. Super filter set to low pass filter, resonant 0, and cutoff 46. Stopper, depth 100 with rate set to half. And tape echo with time set to 800 and feedback 99%, level set to 0 so you can fade it in. If you've seen my bus effects tutorial, then you know I predominantly like to send melodic stuff to bus 1, drum stuff to bus 2, so I can then run effects on them independently. Then for things like intros and vocal chops, I didn't want effects on them at all, so I assigned them to bypass the bus effects. Now I'm going to switch over to bank B and show you around my beat off cut 5. This is the one where I got more creative when using mute groups and pad link. So what's on the pads? Pad 4 is just the intro. Pads 11 through 16 are my drums. And I've actually got this kick, this open hat snare, and this snare roll all in a mute group. Both these two are pretty long samples, and to keep it tight I wanted to cut them off whenever the kick hits like this. Up here on pads 1, 2 and 3 are my main sample chops. And they're in their own mute group. And you can also hear on pads 1 and 2 that there's a hi-hat playing. Those two hi-hat samples are actually tucked away in bank G and pad linked to the two pads in bank B. I did this in the spirit of working smarter, not harder, when I was having trouble playing this drum fill. Then on pads 5, 6, and 7, I have the secondary sample layer. Which are also in their own mute group. And you can see by the green that they're assigned to bus 2. This is because I wanted to be able to play this layer of samples and this layer of samples at the same time, but have filters just on these ones. So where I'm going...
over on pad eight is a variation of pad one and pad seven at the same time, but with the pitch set to minus one. Pad eight is actually just a copy of pad seven. And it's pad linked to pad 12 in bank G, which is a copy of bank B pad one. Pad 10 is just the vocal chop. And pad nine is what I call the kill switch because I use it to stop the other sample pads. There is a sample on this pad, but the volume set to zero and it's in a mute group with these samples. In bank G, I have another kill switch on pad 14 and that is in a mute group with the secondary samples. Then I've pad linked this kill switch with this kill switch. So now pad nine can stop both sample layers. Right, so that's about as deep as I think we need to dive down this rabbit hole right now. If you've got any questions about how I performed that beat set, feel free to get at me in the comments and I'll try to answer the best I can. As always, thanks heaps for watching. Laters.